Oi you, it's time for another episode of Dorothy and the Dealer. Let's tune into the conversation. And um, James Brown's song, It's a Man's World, fantastic track. It's a man's world, but it's nothing without a woman. It's actually all about women and the female energy, and, and it's a really, 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 you would think that James Brown, I mean, he was a lunatic towards the end, um, arrested a few times and, you know, horrific drug addict, and I saw him live in a um, Belvoir Amphitheatre. But uh, you would... Here in Perth. Yeah, Belvoir, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. And... Um, he was terrible, by the way. It was, was he? It was fucking shocking. But um, we literally left. He was just too old. How long ago was this? Um, I think it was around about 2008, oh. maybe 2010. But, um, yeah, great song, for especially for this particular you podcast. Have a, you have um, some random weird shit knowledge boom, boom, around boom, 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 random boom, boom, shit. Boom, 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 boom. I've said yeah. this to you over time, but like I didn't even know you were going to sing that song. Yeah. And then, where it's do you where do you world. find that? Where, where, I don't I don't get it. Yeah, you just have this. You pluck it out. Well, of he was you know he was chased by the cops and then he was arrested and then he was you know he been towards the end you could see his demise through through drug use you know. Um, he was. He just got to the point where he just didn't give a flying fuck, and mm. he'd beaten up his wife, and he tried to escape the cops, and then he got arrested, and then he, he was just high as a fucking kite. And and a lot of the interviews he did towards the end, he was very, very high when he mm. was when he was getting interviewed. But I'm still, again, it's yeah. about you. The fact that you go, I don't know if you research it or if you just come across the information. But Lexi's very like you. She goes and researches random shit. Yeah, and she Comes just wants to know. Some really interesting stuff. She mm-hmm. tells me some really interesting stuff. I'm but like, if a controversial like lines for the time that the song was wrote, it's a man's world, but it's not. It's, it's nothing, about all about women. That's it's what I'm nothing saying. without a woman, you know. Yeah, which um, is true also. Oh, for hundred percent. But very, very, very important part of life. But what we're going to focus on today is actually talking about the men, right? Right, because um, chop chop. Let's give the lads a beating. No, let's not. So um, <laughs> what we're going to do, I think I think, um, let's talk about, because I, I think I was at dinner not all that long ago and somebody was saying something about, I don't know, somebody and labelling it toxic masculinity and I was like... Do you know what my response to that is? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> like, honest to God, it is just well, this fucking catchy, cliche, fucking drama hook... Well, which is across the board nowadays. You, it's it's you fucking can, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere it's like you can triggering. Something. Fuck off. Toxic masculinity. Would you fucking go away, will you? What, what are you talking about? So maybe you need to explain yeah. what people... I think what culture is seeing as toxic masculinity and what real masculinity is, and mm. I think we um, we need to just, I don't know, just explore that a little bit. So what do you see? When people are saying toxic when masculinity... When I think of a real man, I think of Darius from Game of Thrones. Who? Darius from Game of Thrones. Who's Darius? <laughs> anyway, that's... Uh, uh, Mate, you, 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 didn't, didn't you watch... Yeah, Game but who's Darius? Some, sometimes you get names wrong. Yeah, I don't do know if okay, I... Okay, I think he was the... Um, he was the king's son. Uh, there was lots of kings. Anyway, let's move on. So I think in terms <laughs> Are of... Are you sure you've no, got I'm, the right uh, yeah, person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, no, Darius. Darius, watch. Um... But I think that in terms of masculinity, I think what needs to be understood is that first off, uh, not all men get it right and not all women get it right. And throughout our lives, there are certain behaviours that men and women regret. Mm -hmm. And there's times where, you know, I've been toxic in my relationship, Mm -hmm. but I've been man enough, (coughs) excuse me, to understand when I was wrong and be able to... um, admit when I was getting it wrong and be able to man up about things. But I think that being a man is really about understanding that your role in the scenario as a man is there's times you have to be courageous and strong and there's times you have to be, (laughs) there's times you have to be empathetic. There's times you have to be conscious of your behavior um, there's times you have to be the person at the front. Um, there's times you have to be the protector. And so okay, can we can we go back a second? Yeah. Sorry, Mitch. What do you think people are talking about? 
let's just start from the when they're talking about toxic masculinity, mm. right? What do you think they're referring to? Do you think people that term that and you can't speak for all people, obviously, right? But if you're seeing that people are saying and labeling something toxic masculinity, what do you think they're referring to? That when, when, for example, a man is aggressive, right? That that's toxic, right? Aggressive when, when, or over aggressive? Well, aggressive, just aggressive in general. When, when a man is um, um, not communicating, that's toxic, right? When a man is um, um, having to do, uh, you know, having, you know, to do something that is. Um, uh, that uh, where he has to protect his family, or he has to he has to step up, and he has to, you know, be able to communicate in a way that's that's that one may not feel polite, or when he has to be, right. you know, that's what we're. So you're toxic. you're thinking that that's what people are thinking that yeah. that masculine traits, regardless of the purpose of them, that they're being labelled as toxic because they haven't been understood. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or do I you think, think when that these it's traits are coming from a, when these traits are coming from a man, they're being labelled by by certain people as being toxic. Toxic. Okay. But just but I think the whole thing is but I think the whole thing is nonsense. Right. I think it's just a fad. It's just a phase. But the the, the thing is is that. Um, it, it, people have to understand that masculinity is masculinity, femininity is femininity, but both people have the same thing. So, so you're saying that the the lay, the the traits that we generally consider masculine, even though a ma- even in the masculine energy, them showing up in the masculine energy, they're being labelled as toxic. Is that because people don't understand them? Do you think? Yeah. Or do you think that the, the the masculine energy is excessive potentially in some of those yeah, traits? Yeah, but when, when <laughs> those traits are excessive, when a person turns, you know, becomes highly aggressive, violent, that's not a man. They're yeah. not qualities of a man. They're qualities of a coward. Right. And, yeah. and, and But there's times when I have to be aggressive. Yeah. There's times when, you know, uh, if I had to defend my family or my children, if it came to the point where I would have to do that, that I'd have to be violent. Mm. And there's you have every trait, quality and characteristic. But when you use those uh, in in situations where um, you are, you know, it's excessive for the purpose of control or it's excessive for the purpose of... Um, quenching an unstable fucking view of who you are mm-hmm. or what's going on that's a different ball game okay so i think that i think that explains it so it's like w- we're labeling them as something but at the end of the day it's just a masculine energy yeah. and we i think what happens is there's, there's a there i feel i might be incorrect around this but based on some of the things i've heard recently and lately and i'm not just talking about lately the last few months i'm talking about like over the last couple of years mm. that people are labeling things as um toxic because they don't understand that the masculine and feminine dynamic is so different and i think that the masculine needs to have those traits and needs to show up in those traits. And I think you're right in what you're saying is that when they're excessive like that, that's not our, that's not true masculinity. That's somebody who doesn't know how to be in their masculine. And that to me is partly the wounded masculine in mm-hmm. the sense that they feel that they need to step into this excessive version of themselves in order to show that they're a man but actually that's not a man well you know I, I, mean? I think a man has a good internal a real man has a good internal gauge of when to summon certain qualities and attributes to handle certain situations and circumstances yeah you know they have they don't need to be told that from the outside that you know i know when i've done the wrong thing yeah and i know to go back and and be able to communicate it about it and but when a, a man suddenly becomes excessively controlling or excessively manipulative to the point where it's depleting the energy of the female, uh, yeah. it's scaring the children. You know that's not a man. Yeah. You know that's that's a, that's hands down an unstable mind 
and which we would call a coward. Yeah, and Somebody, that, that can be ha- that can happen in either masculine or feminine, obviously. Yeah, of course, know, it happens. So it happens yeah, from both sides. Both sides. Yeah. But what, what what seems to be the trend at the moment is that every man is getting labelled this unless they are being more feminine. Right, and that's where the problem. That's for me where the problem stems from. Yeah. It's like you don't you don't a, want your men to be a feminine. No, there's a there's a true uh, and and clear. Like I feel like the genders are equal, but that doesn't mean that they're not different. They're meant to be different. Mm. The masculine energy is meant to be different than the feminine energy. The masculine in general is stronger physically. It doesn't mean across everybody, but in general, the masculine is stronger physically. You want the masculine to be stronger physically. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The feminine has different traits, emotional traits, and the the separation of those two you know we've had many conversations with john gray over the years you mm. know what i mean and um you know <coughs> men are from mars women are from venus and you know he talks a lot around about the fact that you need to have that distinction mm-hmm. and the fact that you don't have that distinction distinction is actually what causes the problems because what's happening now is is that we're encouraging our men to be more effeminate mm-hmm. and because we're labeling the true masculinity I think as toxic mm-hmm. and so therefore um, the masculine doesn't know where to sit does that make sense the the masculine there's different stages like Alison Armstrong talks about the different stages of um, the evolution of a man, a boy to man, you know, and there's different things that happen at these stages, the page, the knight, the prince, the king and the elder. And in those different stages, the 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 man or the boy, the male, goes through um, different elements of themselves. But ultimately the 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 role of the masculine is in protection. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? And the role of the masculine is in in is in being that that strength and that support um, and that protect in in that protective space. But I think then that on the other side of that, we're encouraged as females to not be in the female. Mm-hmm. And if we're not in our feminine, right, we take on the role of the ma- oh, we can look after ourselves and da da da, which is true. It doesn't mean that you are not capable. It means that when you're in that feminine energy, you allow the masculine to come in and do what the masculine does best, which yep. is to, to to love and to protect, right? Because ultimately you need both. We need both, you of don't, course. You know, if, if it all becomes one side, it falls over. Yes. And what we've seen through history, there's great stats that show as societies start to become more effeminate and encourage a change in gender and encourage a change in uh, from masculinity to femininity. That when the ten- genders start getting questioned getting or when questioned. the lines get blurred. Yeah, more, that's yeah. when it, it tends to be when that society is about to fall. Fucking think about that. Yeah, that's a, so, so over and time. Over time, it can be tracked yeah. through most societies that have ever fallen, most you know empires that have ever fallen. They've fallen, and just beforehand, the lines have started to get blurred. But the feminine energy, the masculine energy, is there for the purpose of reproduction and protection. We know this from our observation of the animal kingdom. And so we need men to be men, you know, and we need women to be women. Now, every person holds every trait and characteristic, but every person, a man's job and a woman's job is to know when it's time to be in that trait and when it's time to step aside and let the feminine energy be in that trait. Mm -hmm. So I know when I'm dealing with the kids, there's a time that they need mom. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday, Lola had a complete melty. Like Mm -hmm. I I haven't seen her have one of these in probably three or four years. Mm -hmm. She absolutely lost her banana. And then trying to console her, it was just get out of my room, get out of my room, get out of my room. She actually need a hole in the wall, which is very unusual for Lola, but she need a hole in the wall that I've actually mm. got to go back and plaster. Wow. So she was really, really, we were like, fuck, okay. But mum knew when to go in and just be with her and then gave her a couple of hours and then went in and sat down and she was yelling and doing all that sort of stuff and then mum just went over and sat down beside her because you have to have the energy the the masculine side of mum had to come out to go over and sit down beside her and just hold her and she 
fought off mum and fought off mum and then she just relaxed into it and then she just wailed for ages and then she came out the other side of that and then out the other side of it she just had this sense of relief and she was sitting with us going uh, you know that wasn't okay for me guys da, 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 da. and we're like honey that's absolutely okay it's understood don't think for one minute that we are mad at you or anything like that. There are ramifications. There's going to be natural consequences for that sort of behavior that you're not going to lose. Those consequences are natural and they will have to roll out. But you need to understand that it is okay. It doesn't, we don't, we love you, but we don't like the behavior or we don't love the behavior. So there's times when mom has to do that sort of stuff. There's times when, um, you know, when, like dealing with the school that mum is like, okay, I need you to, this is a, a male headmaster, I need you to go and talk to him. Well, it's not even just the male headmaster. I was talking to um, some of my guys the other day and saying some of the decisions and the choices that you had to make over time yeah. needed to be made with that the, mm -hmm. that masculine strength and the max, masculine yeah. energy that needed to make a call and just stick by the call. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And sometimes it's... It's, it is about dealing with different people. The point is, I think, though, that the... Well, the can I just say something there? You, you know, in terms of the two masculine, masculine energies, there's time if I go and sit with a male headmaster that I'll know oh, I need to bring Angie in for this. Angie will help me to understand or, or help the two of us to understand our choice here of how we're handling mm. their education or how we're handling their behaviour in the school. Well, I think that's the key, right? It's that the... I think... My, the, my concern, I suppose, is that it's being labelled as toxic, but it's just masculine. Yeah. And I think that... Yeah, when, that's, when, a, that's when, a, a really is, important the point. Thi the thing is, is that, you know, I, I was really frustrated. A couple of months ago, um, there was this thing going around with the... Um, oh, people on social media asking, would you rather... Um, be caught in the woods with a bear or a man? Or would you rather your daughter be caught in the bear on the woods with a bear or a man? Do you know what I mean? And I remember us having this conversation because it would frustrate me seeing that. And I am not dismissing the, the violence and the ramifications that have and, – and the, the injuries that have been inflicted on women on, from men. Does that make sense? That That's definitely happened. We're not dismissing that, right? But being caught in the woods with a bear or a man and everyone's choosing the bear because the man might be dangerous. And I'm, and we had a conversation about it. And like, that's not a man. That's, that's like, right. that's not th that, that, but that version, that, that, that conversation is, I would rather have led that conversation in a different way to say, hey, this actually is this a man that you're talking about, or is this a like you said a coward? Does yeah, that make I, sense? I, I think there's a couple of things that we have to understand about social media, and I think uh, when we're saying this, everybody understands it anyway. But we get caught up in it anyway. But that that sort of meme um, or clip is really. You know, they could have probably interviewed a hundred people, and then they go, "Okay, we'll just put all of these, these ones answers." Yeah, okay. Of course. Um, so, um, the other thing is that the concept itself. If I, if you're caught, would you rather be caught in the woods with a bear or a man? Well, a bear is gonna fucking attack you and eat you. And what it does is it puts the bear next to the man, giving the person the impression, well, that the man is gonna attack you and eat you. When in actual fact. It's most likely if a man was there and a woman was there, the man would do what he could to be able to protect the woman. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So and and that's what a real man would do. He would say, "Okay, walk away slowly. Don't panic. Don't scream. Lie on the ground. Whatever it is." But that's the natural instinct of someone. So or fucking run. So so uh, I think that that sort of meme is just clickbait. Well, it's that's the point, right? But that's the whole point. It's the point is men is are not bears. Well, yeah, I know. But the point is, is that. They're trying to make a point that men are dangerous, which is bullshit. Right? Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. which is true for a part of the mass. Like well, there are men, in the same way that it's true for some women. No, right? men so men are a real men. man. A real man is not dangerous. Correct, only to himself. Right, and they can. What I'm saying is though, that what they're doing is they're taking a subsection. Mm. They're saying because some men have done this, let's label all men as yeah. this. And the danger of that is, is that we become 
uh, afraid of tr- the true masculine. Lines get blurred. The lines get blurred, and then we don't have the we don't understand the fact that in order to evolve, we have to have the two dynamics. Mm. That, that we have to have the masculine and feminine mm. dynamic. Mm. And I feel like. From a man's perspective, I think the man, the men have to take responsibility for the times where they are not stepping into their masculine, and the women need to take responsibility for the for not allowing the men to ta- sta- stand in their masculine. Well, uh, can I just maybe look at it a different way? People who are cowards, men who are cowards need to take responsibility to step into the masculine. Mm-hmm. A man that is a man does not need to do that. No, he, I, I, he I'll already, tell you what I think he, about that. Okay, let me just finish. Yeah, he already knows who he has a good yes, gauge of who he is. Agreed with that. And there are some exceptional men, 100%. exceptional men in this yeah. world. And there are some people who are trying to be exceptional men in this world. Yeah. but don't see themselves as a man because they know that their behavior is incongruent and it's not yeah. a decent... And then there are some fucking lunatics in this world. Yeah. I've met them yeah. met loads of times. People that will never, ever be like a man. They'll pretend they're a man. They'll give off the guise that they're a man or they'll just be an out-and-out lunatic. They are completely different categories. You know, they, they, I've been in the category where I've been out of line and I've, I've realized, okay, yeah. I, I, I need to be a man here. Yeah, you know, I need I need to actually man up. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, yeah, the, no, the, I get that. So, but there is there is definitely the, the fringe that are oh, they're, are but that's what I'm saying. There always is, right? Mm. And then you've got the other people who have no understanding about taking responsibility. Um, you've got the fringe. You've got the people that are in that I don't take responsibility, and then you've got the the masculine, the true, um, the, the the man who sits in his true masculine, right? The man who sits in his true masculine, where I'm saying about taking responsibility, is they ta- have to take responsibility for being in that true masculine. They have to understand that if there's a the energy of the non-true masculine around them as well, is to call them on that. Does that make sense? So, so yes. So and then the feminine has to also take responsibility for being in the feminine because that allows the masculine mm. to step in to their fullness as well. The feminine allows the masculine to step into the full, and, and <coughs> vice versa, by the way, because the masculine allows the feminine to step into her fullness as a feminine. Yeah, the feminine. And, and, and I think, you know, one of, the, like, one of the things about a good relationship between a feminine and masculine energy is that, you know, if the feminine energy will do a really, really good job of... <laughs> enabling and empowering the masculine energy when they're out of, you know, like and just really, really good at being able to say to me, hey, you know, that's that's not that's not okay. Yeah. You, you know, and I'm able to go, okay, is it or isn't it? Okay, if it's not, then I know what to do. If it is, I just I'm not communicating it correctly so that she can understand where I'm trying to come from. Mm-hmm. And, and that's – so we were – this is the point, is that you require masculinity and nobody wants fucking a lunatic in their life. Mm. Nobody wants a fucking lunatic in their life. But you can't tar every man with that brush. Mm. And because the man has to be – like – uh, and that's everyone's response. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's everyone's responsibility. Of course. It's everyone's responsibility, in my view, to not tar everyone with the same brush. That does not mean – so I, I really but – that, But that's what seems to be happening. That's this bait, you know. But if you have any if, – if a person has any sort of an ounce of um, – ability to self-reflect and an and ounce of emotional intelligence, they see that exactly for what it is. I know. I understand that. I understand that. There's so much... Like, but, there's, but there's young people, Mills, that we, that are... That don't see that. That are fucking That's just getting, sa- getting caught is, up in this, this nonsense. Is why, this is why I'm saying it's about us taking mm. responsibility. It's also about us taking responsibility on a broader scale because how I see it, uh, you know, there, there's a, a patch of time, especially this year, there's been, it's really come to my awareness this year. Now, that how much um, violence has been committed oh, towards yeah. women, like and mm. domestic violence. Mm. That, it's, it's bonkers. That is, I think the stats are fucking high. high. Like, but the point like is, my, is that women that have been murdered, murdered, right, and, and not believed and all that sort of stuff mm. in terms of that. So, there is definitely something happening that we are not like 
we are not um, – there's definitely something happening that we're not protecting women from the men that are behaving in that way or the men I'm in quotation marks because they are not living in their true masculine, yeah. right? <clears throat> so we ha- we're not – I'm not personally dismissing that. That's there. But what's happening is is that – the masculine energy, the true masculine energy is required for us as uh, to evolve and to move. You know, there are statistics that say that over 70% of um, uh, people in long-term, like, um, confinement, you know, in jails and stuff like mm-hmm. that, grew up without a father. Over 70% as well of adolescents who are in, uh, you know, who are being... Um, drug who rehabilitation. Have, drug rehabilitation, substance, substance abuse... Grew up without a father. Yeah. And when you think about it, it's actually quite scary around <coughs> the Terrible. fact that we're allowing that to happen partly because we are not facilitating the the conversation that says this is what a man is. We need that masculine energy because if we don't have that masculine energy, our society, everything crumbles. If we, What happens is if we don't have the family unit, it all crumbles. Mm. And the family unit includes having the masculine energy present. Mm-hmm. So um, I think, I don't know, what do you think is the, like, what do you think as individuals that people can do? Like, so the way I'm very mindful of it, I'm answering the question I'm asking you, but the way I'm very mindful of it is, is that as a female, I have to understand what... Um, the masculine energy, the true masculine energy requires and looks for. And as well as, so therefore, allow myself to be in my feminine to allow the masculine to emerge. And the masculine, I think, um, has to understand at maybe the line between what is me standing in my masculine and what is not. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And be able to be responsible for that as well. Mm-hmm. But what do you think are the, what, what are the ways that you can do that or people can do that, do you think? Well, I, I mean, the, one of the things that I've learned in, in the past 12 months is that when there is, when the feminine energy is highly emotional, your objective is, uh, uh, as um, Nerida Mills taught me, is, is to be the vessel and be able to hold the space for the, for the feminine energy to, to be that way. And... Um, I think so as a man um, what I require in, 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 in first off is to understand my role mm-hmm. as a man what is your role when you react to your partner when they're emotional or there's a highly emotional situation when you become emotional that's estrogen flowing through your body not testosterone and so um, the key is to be able to um, sustain equanimity in your emotional state in their crazy you become mm, that's, that's the same with pretty much everything we yeah. do, even with kids yeah right? because crazy meeting crazy doesn't sort of anything it mm-hmm. just produces more crazy so in their crazy you become mm-hmm. and you know the other thing is is that i found that um also s- stepping up uh, understanding who i am and as a person and that i don't need anybody like i don't need my wife to love me uh, I, if my wife doesn't love me, it doesn't matter. I'm actually okay. It doesn't okay. change who you are. It doesn't are change who I am. I'm actually okay. And so okay means, okay, I have a good internal gauge of when I'm in integrity, out of integrity, when I'm b- being a good person, not being a good person. Mm-hmm. I have a good internal gauge of that when, and I'm able to self-regulate and get myself back into a state of, of balance. Mm-hmm. And what I... What, um, uh, I need from a woman is to be able to give me the space to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, but if sometimes you can get in situations where, you know, women don't realize that men need to process, men don't talk, mm-hmm. they need to go away and process and then encouraging the man to, like Ange encourages me, hey, do you need to talk about that? You know, afterwards, it should, I'd say, no, just not right now. I'm just it's just a fucking mess upstairs. Mm. So let me just sort it out and then I'll talk. And then creating a space to be able to talk with me. And wh- the way we do it is we do it and um, we walk our driveway. We have a really long driveway. We walk our driveway. Mm. So walking next to me and just discussing things with me helps me to really 
have the space to be able to put. She knows never sit down opposite Mitch and ask him how the fuck he's going because yeah. it's just well. A that's a that's a masculine trait. Like when you want to talk to a boy, you go side by side with them. Mm. You're in activity with them. Mm. Girls can sit over lunch and talk for hours on end and look at each other. Mm. But the boys and the masculine energy requires you to be in activity. Mm. So I remember in years gone by when we were studying and we were stuck with stuff, we would go for a walk because I knew that your focus wasn't directed on mm. me and trying to find a solution it was out here and then it the solution came you know yeah so yeah i think i mean there's so many things to unpack with all of that masculinity and femininity thing but i think you know in terms of being a father and in terms of being um you know stepping up as in your role as the as a masculine you know and in the masculine as a father i think it's about understanding those the traits that you have and using them to best advantage in your scenario. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And making sure that your kids... So the masculine is, like you said, the vessel, right? Yeah. The vessel meaning the strength and the sturdiness and the that vessel requires the support and the softness of the feminine in order to feel like it can have that sturdiness mm. anyway. But that presence in, in your children's life makes such a difference do you know what I mean understanding that you can have that and be that for your kids and not trying to um I don't know squash the the those true masculine traits do you know what I mean allowing them to flourish Mm. because when you allow them to flourish all of the other beauty comes from that because then you can step up in being the provider you can step up and be uh, into being that support and that sturdiness that is required in that space you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. Yeah.